Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my Python 2.5 through 2.7 tutorial. This is the most requested tutorial that I got recently in a poll that I put out there. And the reason why I'm doing this, even though I've already done a Python 3 tutorial, is there are an immense number of libraries available with, with these different versions of Python. And I'm going to go through a couple of them in this tutorial. First off, you're going to want to install Python 2.7. You're going to have to go to python.org and download that. And I trust you can handle that on your own. The IDE I'm going to use to develop everything in is called Eclipse. It's available at eclipse.org, as you can see right here on the screen. It's very, very easy to install and free. You're also going to want to add on a tool to Eclipse called PyDev. It's available at pydev.org. I'm going to show you here in a second how to install that. And if you get confused at any point in time and need any more information, if you go to this site right here, it shows how to install all this stuff. But I'm going to show you here on the screen. So let's say I can trust that you're able to install Eclipse. This is how you hook up PyDev with Eclipse. This is a little bit confusing. You click on help and you click on install new software and then here you're going to want to actually type in pydev.org and then click on the little pop-up that comes up here on the screen and you want to click right there and you want to click on next. Just click on the first one and install that. Then what you want to do is click on Eclipse up here, and you're going to want to find preferences somewhere inside of Eclipse. And you're going to want to point to your version of Python. Just click on New. And this is the same for all OSs. Eclipse looks the same. It's one of the reasons why I use it. Then you want to click on Browse, and you want to locate the version of Python, the interpreter that you installed. Click on Open, and then hit OK, 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 OK. So that's how you set up the whole entire development platform here that I have in front of you. Now, to start off your Python coding, you're going to have to tell the terminal that's going to run your Python program the location of the interpreter once you install it. For most of you, it's going to be hash, exclamation point, space, forward slash, USR, meaning user, bin, forward slash, Python. And that will work for almost all of you. If that is not true, then you just want to find the location where you have the Python interpreter. Whenever you tell it to execute your program, it's going to hit this line and say, okay, well, where do I execute it? Oh, okay, this is where it goes. So that's really the whole point of this first line of code. If you want to comment anything in Python, you just, in Python 2.5 through 2.7, you put a hash symbol, and this is where you would comment. This is totally ignored by the interpreter, anything after that hash symbol. Now what I'm going to do is create a bunch of different variables and assign values to them. There's something weird here if you programmed in the past or this will look weird. In most programming languages you have to define using the like for example int that this is going to be an integer meaning this is going to be a variable you can see the errors popping up. This is going to be a variable that's going to contain a number that does not have decimal places. In Python you do not do that. You create a variable name and it'll either start off with an underscore or a letter and it can contain numbers if if you want to do that inside of your code, but you don't have to. White space is very important in Python, and we'll get more into that later on. But basically what you do is you say, okay, I want to create a storage area. I want it to have this name, and I want it to have this value, and Python figures out what type of variable it is. So I'm also going to create what they call a long, which is just a long number, again, with no decimal places. It's called a long int, and as you see here, I put an L at the end to force it to become a long int. I'm going to create a float or a number that does have a decimal place. I'm going to create a string. And these names don't mean anything. You don't have to start off all your strings with this and, and floats with the word float. These are just arbitrary names that I picked out. Creating a string, which is just a string of characters. And then creating a Boolean variable, which can only contain either true or false as a value. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the print function. And what print does is it just prints out whatever follows it onto the screen. That's it. If you use Python 3, you're used to everything being surrounded by double quotes. Now I could actually do that with 2.7, but I'm going to choose not to because it doesn't work on some of the other versions. I'm going to use a function called type to display on the screen what type of variable all these different variables up here are. That's what it does. And a function just is a defined grouping of code that does certain actions for you. Don't worry about that and we'll be getting into it further if that's at all confusing to you. So I'm just going to copy and paste five of these guys right there. And I'm going to come up here and copy this. So all I'm doing is creating storage areas. When I was creating this tutorial, I didn't know if I should just talk about what's different between three and these other versions of Python. I decided just to go from the ground up. 
Okay, so I did all this, and I'm gonna run this code. That's all I have to do. And see, it's of type int, long, float, string, boolean. Now what happens if I take this L off of here? Let's see. Now it's an integer. Not for long, if I put enough zeros in here. See, now it became of type long int. And all it means is it's just a gigantic integer. It's best to put the L in there just to make sure. I'll give you a couple Boolean examples now, like let's create another Boolean. I'm gonna call it Boolean2, and we give it the value of false. I'm gonna show you what are called Boolean operators, and this is just ways to work with Boolean variables. One of the Boolean operators is AND, and another one is OR. You can see it's highlighting the text here. That's notifying you that these are keywords. So let's run this guy again. What's it doing? All right, so boolean ex true and boolean2 is has the value of false. What it's doing is it's saying if both of these are true, then print true on the screen. Well, so it prints false on the screen. Then it says if either of these are true, that's what or says, then print true on the screen. And if you proceed a boolean operator with the keyword not, it's going to print the opposite. So for example, you can see here, this is false, so it prints true. And if I put ex in here and run it again, now it's gonna print false. And if that's at all confusing, don't worry about it. You'll catch up to it here soon enough. I'm gonna show you different ways you can work with numbers. All I'm doing is creating two integers, signing a value to them, and two floats. Remember, just it's a number with a decimal place. It's all it is, nothing that confusing. And I'm gonna show you different ways you can mess around with numbers inside Python. I'm gonna divide 99 by seven. Remember, these are two integers. Let's see what happens. 14, well that's wrong. This actually should be 14.14. Why did it do that? If you divide an integer by an integer, it will spit out an integer. It will ignore any decimal places that follow it. So how could you get around that? Well, you could use another function that will convert these integers into floats, but it's only gonna convert it inside of here. It's not gonna permanently convert it into a float. Now you see it printed out a float with the decimal places and so forth and so on. You can convert using an int function and go in here and convert a float into an integer. And you can do the same thing with putting B-O-O-L and, and strings. And you can see it converted that to a seven even though the value is 7.9. If you convert a Boolean value that's true into an integer, you get the value of one. And if it was false, you'd kick back the number zero here. You can print out the screen whether one number is bigger than another number. See, false came out. Let's copy this. I'm gonna go through all the other different comparison operators that are available to you. There's also less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, not equal to, or equal to. And whenever you run these, it's gonna spit out the Boolean operators. And you could also go and assign this, Boolean ex is equal to. You could actually assign this value back to this guy, just to show you what it does. And it would print out false there because they're not equal to each other. Of course, you can also add these guys or subtract them or multiply them, divide them. Modulus will return the remainder of a division. And if we run that, you can see all of the different math functions that are available and built into Python. One of the reasons why I'm doing this tutorial is because of the fact that Python, the two series, has so many libraries that are available to it. I'm gonna show you how to import a library now. What you could do is go import. Math is a common library that people use. And now I have access to all of the different pre-built functions that come with this library. And all I had to do to get them was just type in import. Now let's say, for example, I want to print out the screen, the square root of int one. That's all I need to do. And you can see there it popped up on the screen. But let's say I only want this function right here. I only want square roots. There's no, no reason to import the whole entire math library and make my code longer and my files bigger than they have to be. Well, is there a way to just get that? Yes. I just say from math import square root. Then I have to come down here, chop this little guy off, and then hit F5. And that's just another way to import just a single function from the math library. But what if you want to allow users to actually send you information inside of a program? Well, we're just gonna create ourselves a variable that's gonna store the value that the user sends to you, followed by equals, raw, input. This is just simply input inside of Python 3, but either way, this is one of the ways they're different. And I'm not gonna keep bringing up the different things that are different about them. There's actually not terribly many things whenever it comes down to it. All right, and what this is gonna do is print out that string, what is your name? And then I'm gonna print 
back to the screen exactly what they presented to me as their name. And all I'm doing is putting this string of text right here, followed by whatever they entered in. So let's hit F5. What's your name? Enter. And it says, hello, Derek. Pretty nice. Let's see how it has no space available here. Well, you can get around that either by putting a space in here, or you could get rid of that plus sign and put a comma in there instead. And you can see it automatically puts a space in here. There's many different ways to mess around with strings, and I'm going to cover that completely in further tutorials. I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of, of how you can play around with strings. Another way to assign, let's say, a multi-line string to a string variable, like let's just call this long, str, is to use multiple quotes. So, one, two, three. Let's print that to screen. And you can see it printed out that long series of text onto my screen. But it also inserted what we call a new line in here. What if I want to get rid of that? Simple, just put this backslash in here, hit F5. And you can see it printed it all right there onto the screen. Well, you can also save strings in a couple other different ways. So let's say, you see here I use double quotes. I could also use single quotes. I showed you how to do multi-quoted strings that cover multiple different lines. Still a string, see how it popped it up there? You can interchange double quotes or single quotes in any way. And the reason why this is an issue is, say you wanted to do this, and you can see there's errors popping up all over the place. Why are there errors popping up all over the place? Because Python doesn't know where this string ends because you have a single quote there, you have a single quote there, single quote, it gets confused. So you could put a double quote in here and now Python is no longer confused by your code. See, how are you doing? But let's say you wanted to use a single quote and double quotes and all these other different things. How would you be able to do that? Like let's say this, you, you demand that this is a single quote. Well, you can escape out the single quote by putting a backslash, followed by your single quote, backslash, and a single quote, like that. And you can see now it's using single quotes. And you can also backslash a bunch of other different things, like let's say string, hello, and let's say I wanna put a space. See, this is what we call a new line, backslash n, and Probably the only real backslashes you're going to come in contact with a lot are, of course, wanting to be able to use a backslash inside of your strings and how you do that. It's just double backslash. And then, of course, your quotes, your double quotes, and your new lines. So that's a quick, quick, quick run through of a lot of things about Python, specific to Python 2.5 through 2.7. I'm going to continue this tutorial on, and it's going to actually be longer and more in-depth than my previous Python tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. And if there's anything specific you'd like me to do with Python in this tutorial, leave that request below. I'm going to pretty heavily focus this tutorial on digging information out of websites, however. But, of course, if you bring up a good example you'd like to see, I could most definitely also get into that. Till next time.